let's learn more about education in Milwaukee. We'll start with a state of the city of sorts from City Forward Collective's Brittany Kinzer before we hear from individual schools. Good morning, everyone, and thank you to Kate and Dan Meyer and everyone at the Biz Times for bringing us all together today to talk about education, which is one of the most significant issues facing Milwaukee and honestly isn't discussed in a big group like this normally. So thank you. So as my introduction said, I am Brittany Kinzer. I'm the president of City Ford Collective. City Ford Collective is a team of passionate educators, researchers, and advocates working together to achieve our mission, making sure every child has an excellent school to attend. We do this through a combination of policy analysis, advocacy, and school-based initiatives. Our goal is to make sure every child in Milwaukee has a great school. And my team is over here, so thank you for being here today. <laughs> So I want you to leave here today with a deeper understanding of the issues we face and how you can take action to make change. Our education system is facing immense challenges from the ever-growing need to recruit and retain great teachers and school leaders to diminishing student enrollment. But I want to focus on two specific challenges today, a historically poor track record of academic achievement and substantial funding inequities across the different school types and special ed funding. So what I'd like you to do right now before I talk about our academic uh, crisis here in Milwaukee is to picture yourself at Pfizer Forum. It is a packed stadium with 20,000 students. It's halftime and the announcer says only the students who are reading, writing, and doing math at grade level can stay. 80% of the stadium leaves. It empties out. 16,000 students leave the stadium. That only leaves a small upper section of the stadium filled. It makes me, it's hard not to cry as I'm talking about this because I'm thinking about our actual children. So we are failing our, so too many of our students. Overall, only one out of our five students in Milwaukee are on grade level. And our Hispanic students, only one in seven. And then our black students, only one in 10 are reading at grade level and doing math, only one in 10. So the next time you drive past a school in Milwaukee at arrival or dismissal, and there's 10 buses outside, Imagine only one of those buses is filled with children who have been prepared with what they need to be able to read, write, and do math on grade level. The other nine buses are filled with children who have not been prepared. And imagining if that was your child or a child that you love on one of those buses. And there's nothing about our students in Milwaukee that doesn't, there's nothing about them in any way that they don't have potential, they have the same potential as all of our children. So we are in an academic crisis here. So before I discuss the other challenges today, I want to think it's, an, it's important for us to understand how many children are in Milwaukee. We have 112,000 students in Milwaukee. And currently half of those students, almost half of those students, those families are choosing to send their child to a private or public school, a public charter school, sorry. And we know that these students in these schools receive far less per student than their peers in traditional public schools. Go to this slide here. <clears throat> so students in private and charter schools receive about $7,000 less on average per year. To, uh, uh, to fund their education than students in traditional public schools. This disparity has nothing to do with what students need or what our schools need to operate. It's just based solely on how the state and local government funds our schools. And shockingly, what I found out is most families are not aware of this funding disparity. I know this from working with our families and doing some mobilization work. They're just simply choosing 
I don't know if I'm too loud, sorry. <laughs> um, they're just simply choosing a school based on what they think their child needs, um, based on what their child needs. And then there's the third issue that we're um, discussing today is the, dis, uh, the funding of special education. Wisconsin, Wisconsin's level for uh, funding special education is one of the lowest in the country at only 30% reimbursement. So what does this mean if you're a school administrator? So one year when I was at uh, Rocket Ship on the South Side, we spent over a million dollars on special education. So our reimbursement for the next year was only $300,000, even though our special ed, um, uh, even though our special ed had actually gone up to more than over a million dollars. Those are our most, these are our most vulnerable students, and we are both required by law and have a moral obligation as educators to provide for them, even if it's not funded. So, together, all of these significant funding issues put a huge and heavy burden on our schools. Add, I'm sure many of, many of our schools are here, so we all know. <laughs> so if a private and charter school doesn't operate on their per student funding, how do they make it work? They rely on philanthropic con uh, contributions to operate. They have to go and ask for money to operate. So if you are a supporter of these schools, thank you. There's many of you in here, I know, that are supporting our schools. We are, you are really making a difference and we're grateful for you every single day. But we have to ask, is this really the best way to run the schools and serve roughly half of Milwaukee students? We know, and many people in this room know, that there is a limited group of potential donors in Milwaukee and a far larger group of worthy organizations that need support. So I've shared some sobering facts here. The biggest challenges we face is a historic level, sorry, a historic lack of achievement, unequal funding for students, and inadequate funding for special education. And right now, you're probably wondering, okay, so what can we do about this? This year, as our elected officials plan the state of Wisconsin's next budget cycle, we have an unprecedented opportunity to address these issues. The state budget currently has a surplus of over $7 billion. $7 billion, and they're all wondering, what are we gonna do with this $7 billion? At City Forward Collective, we have two key goals. First, we wanna work to ensure that every school has the necessary resources to help their students be successful. That means we have to change how students are funded in our state so that no matter where they go, the resources the schools get are equal. By closing this, the per pupil funding gap, tens of thousands of Milwaukee students and schools that they serve will have the resources they need to thrive. Our students in our private and charter schools have the same needs as our students in the other schools, in the traditional public schools. And they deserve the same level of funding and resources and support. We are also advocating for the state to increase its special, special education reimbursement Currently, as I said, the lowest, one of the lowest in the country for, at 30%. We're advocating for them to raise the special education reimbursement from 30 to 50%. I'm almost done, I'm going over, sorry. <laughs> um, at City Ford Collective, and in partnership with our CFC Action Fund, we are advancing these solutions through our policy research, our parent and educator mobilization, and advocacy. And I'm excited to announce that last night we launched our parent mobilization. It was so exciting to see so many of your school's parent liaisons there, looking at Anthony and Rob and Abby. Um, so we are helping build a coalition that includes educators and community members. So what can you do to take action? Please go to our website and sign up for our emails. You can join our equal funding campaign and then please share with your networks. It's gonna take all of us to fulfill our promise to our children. These issues are affecting the real lives of children, and it's gonna take all of us to ensure they, they get the education they deserve. Thank you so much.